Boy, it sure is easy to criticize the boss and all the decisions the boss makes uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, have fun doing it with your friends. But <laughs> what happens when the boss is you? How do you deal with that? Diane Nelson is a leadership coach with the Nelson team, and she is going to give us some insight on how to handle that situation. Diane, thank you so much for talking to us. First question, how do you handle, like if you're the boss, people are going to talk about you. I knew that as soon as I took leadership roles. How do you handle knowing that people are going to talk about you? Oh, boy. Well, it, first off, you do, yeah, it is, you. that's going to happen. Uh, that's where you develop a bit of a thick skin. Um but also you have to, I think, be uh, reflective on what it is that you're doing or saying that is triggering, triggering other people to have negative comments. Now, the assumption is that, let me start even sooner, sometimes we assume that the, the comments are negative and they aren't always. And that's because we have some stuff in our own head that gets in the way. It's not always negative. So that's, that's probably the first thing. But so if it is negative or you you have some indication that it's negative, the thing is to be the first the first thing is to really become self-aware of what it is you're you're portraying or saying. Now, you can't always figure it out inside your just by talking to yourself. You'll have to ask. And I, I do see this so commonly among among leaders. They're hesitant to ask. They're hesitant to say, ask for feedback. You know, we as leaders, we do performance reviews, we we check in and do coaching with our with our staff. But you know, a big part of that, a critical part of that is also asking for feedback. And not to be concerned about that or awkward about it or in any way nervous about it. It's it's really important. It, it opens up the, the conversation levels. It, it gets deep at what's important and what isn't. And that way you find out what is there substance to the disagreement or the negativity, or if it's something that you didn't know. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's an old saying, your friends will stab you in the front. So when people give you that feedback, when, especially when somebody below you gives you negative feedback, the only way you should feel about that is grateful because that was an act of heroism for them to come and tell you in the first place. And they really are there trying to make things better, primarily for themselves, but for you too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you set up the culture where that is appreciated, in fact, as, wow, I didn't know that. You know, a, a silly comparison, but it's pretty powerful is somebody said to me, you know, you, you can't see the spinach in your own teeth, but you'd be very <laughs> grateful that somebody told you you had spinach in your teeth. Absolutely. It's the same thing. Yeah. So you need to hear that. And then you need to, to accept it for what the person said, ponder it, decide whether it's something that is something that you ought to do something about or if it really t is telling about where they're at but you need to really be uh, honest with yourself and and consider that and then maybe go and ask other people you know mm -hmm. i've gotten this kind of feedback is this a co is is this how it's affecting everybody was this a one off was it with with just this one person so that's that's the sign of a great leader, in my opinion, is somebody who is transparent and willing, willing to take the kimono off and be um, kind of exposed as to, I'm not perfect. I'm doing my best. And the more input I get from you, the better I can be. Yeah, I mean, when, when you do that, you are now top level leadership, when you are willing to be vulnerable and listen, and expose your own flaws and react to them. That is top yeah. notch. What are some other things that leaders can do to get their staff working, you know, for them to work with them? Well, um, I, I, to me, everything revolves around conversation. Uh, conversation creates uh, culture. So the kind the, the quality of the conversation will create the, the quality of culture that you want to have. So it's respectful. It's open it's transparent, it's in-depth as opposed to surface, it's let's push the boundaries here and what if we could do 
X. What if things were different and it was more like that? Like ask some what if questions that really open up people to, to wanting to uh, really dig and find something new and better and, and, and different in how things are being done. So that that just creates such uh, a workplace that's so much more fun because people come to work then and going, how are things gonna be different today? Rather than I'm gonna go through the same checklist of tasks every single day and then I'm gonna to go to that meeting where he's gonna bore, you know, go on and on and on. Uh, you know, that's not fun. And man, we spend we, lots of hours of our life at work. It better be fun. And the leader needs to make it fun. Yeah, it all comes from there. And, you know, fostering conversation. One of the great things I always learned is when you're running a meeting as a leader, yeah. uh, ask people's opinions first. Ask, especially the junior people, ask them first. Because once you talk, they're not going to want to say anything yeah. that contradicts you. And then right. you're not getting the benefit of their expertise. Yeah, no. Then you're, then you're, uh, yeah you're 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 crippled you only have your own ideas oh my goodness that's a that's a shortfall that's a that's a sad state you need everybody's and you're right lots of people won't speak first they have to be asked there's others who don't like to be asked or put on the spot but they will come forward give them give them the time and the space and the and the ease uh to explore ideas that aren't maybe perfectly baked but but you start drawing them out. So again, it's all about conversation and how you engage people in a dialogue. So one of the best things you can do as a leader is foster an environment with open conversation, open discussion. You know, I've always said when people come to complain to you, that's great because people are going to complain. And if they're not complaining to you, they're going to complain about you. Yes. So Diane, if people right. want to uh, get a hold of you and uh, take advantage of your leadership services, which are sorely needed in the world today and make such a difference in a workplace. Uh, your email is the best way to get a hold of you. Yes, it is. Or you can find me on LinkedIn. Thank you very much, Diane. Great conversation. I think this is going to help a lot of people. Thanks so much, Greg.